Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we will talk about Fusion 360 performance and hardware requirements. I am going to divide this video into two parts. In part one, which is this video, I will talk about how we can improve Fusion performance and what can affect the performance. In part two, the next video, I will talk about Fusion 360 minimum hardware requirements, troubleshooting hardware performance, how to find a new computer for Fusion 360 and I will also show you a really amazing tool that will help you with all the above. Now a quick reminder don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification every time I'm releasing a new video. Moving on so we are in part one uh, how to improve Fusion 360 performance and what can affect the performance. I've created a checklist and I'm going to put it in the description uh, which is going to help you uh, troubleshoot if you have any issues with Fusion 360. So, and it's kind of divided into two. The first uh, part, uh, I'm going to go through it right now. We are going to check the, the platform that uh, Fusion, 6, Fusion 360 is sitting on, which means the operating system and everything around it. And then we're going to go into Fusion 360. So the first question usually I ask people uh, when they're experiencing some issues uh, with Fusion or in general with their computer is when was the last time everything worked as it should and what happened at that time? This is very important to trace our steps because at some point things worked. If it never worked already in the beginning, that's a whole different story. But if it Work, was working one day uh, good and then the next day it didn't work then we need to figure out exactly when and what happened at that time for example if there was any operating system updates for example I don't know if you were aware of that but uh, those who were uh, Windows Insider members they usually get updates uh, before everyone else and sometimes better updates that actually caused uh, issues with Fusion 360. It crashed, and but the, as far as I know, they fixed it. So this is something that it's very important to check if you got any update also in that time. Another thing is driver updates. Maybe you got some driver updates, and they also could uh, cause some issues in the system. Another thing is if you installed other software, this is something you also would need to figure it out. Some uh, software can maybe uh, cause some uh, uh, issues or maybe you need to also check the task manager for other software that may run on the background and takes extra resources. Uh, so you can go into the task manager if you're on Windows. I know Mac, they have another a kind of a um, task manager system so we can go up here and you can for example do a cpu uh, filter right here and see which one takes a lot of resources and memory also as well and then we can shut them down and then uh, see if it uh, if it helps okay so um now let's see if we have more yes make sure Fusion is excluded from any antivirus software. This is also very important because as you know, antivirus software is scanning any changes to file in the system. And when we are modeling, we making changes every time we save it. So there is a new version for a file in the computer on the cache file. And then antivirus can see that and scan it. So that also can cause some uh, performance issues. So we need to exclude a fusion form antivirus. I cannot show you how to do that because it depends on which antivirus software you're using, so you have to check it out yourself. And also remember you need a good stable internet connection because Fusion 360 is a cloud-based software. So if you have issues with your soft video internet connection, that could also cause some issues. And because when we're working, we're working uh, on a cache file in the system and everything something changes to that it immediately synchronized to the cloud so that's also something that you need to uh, remember all those checks uh, are to make sure that the platform as i mentioned before the operating system and the environment 
that Fusion is sitting on is working properly. Now, if everything is good so far, then we can move on to Fusion. And if you have issues in Fusion, if it's, a, for example, you're working on a file and you're experiencing some slowdown or whatever, then the first thing you can check is open another file and check if you are experiencing the same issues. Okay, that's usually what I, the first thing I do. Then another option is uh, you can also uh, open an older version and check how it works. Let's take, for example, uh, this chair file that I have here. So if I'm experiencing suddenly uh, some issues in performances, uh, at that point, what I can do is I can go to the uh, our data panel and then I can click right here to see uh, the versions. I can expand right here to see all the other. Then what I can do right here, this icon, it says open. The other one, it's promote. We don't need to promote. We just need to open an early version. So we can click on that and that opens a new version, which we cannot basically change. You see it's, it's locked. And then from here, we can check if everything works, if I'm experiencing the same issues or not. If everything is fine, then we can just close it and then we can uh, move on. Um, another thing is a good idea to do from time to time is uh, compute all to make sure that uh, everything in a design uh, is basically uh, compute as it should. And um, so you can do that uh, with shift B or you can also go to tool utilities sorry control b yeah and compute all okay and that's for my own experience i'm doing it sometimes happened to me where i um everything looks good in the timeline then i did the compute all and then suddenly it showed me that there are some uh, errors some issues and that brings me to the next one which is very important make sure you don't have any warnings and or errors in the timeline this is one of the things that can really get you into trouble along the road and degrades the performance so remember that what you see here this is no go this is uh, really not good we must fix them before we continue uh, modeling and i see it quite often in the fusion 360 forum and people asking for help they are touching their files when we open them voila we have errors in the timeline and we usually tell them that uh, we are sorry we cannot help them <laughs> until they fix the the warning in errors okay and this is very very important and let's move on let's see what we've got mm, on our list so um, yeah we need to also follow in general fusion 360 best practice such as instead of one sketch with many geometry profile, we need to divide the geometries into multiple simple sketches. It will be much easier to manage them and will improve performance. If you haven't noticed it uh, by now, Fusion doesn't like complex sketches. I mean, one giant sketch with a lot of geometry, it really degrades the performance. You feel it quite, uh, quite fast and the next point is also connected to that is use feature pattern instead of sketch pattern so let me show you an example this uh, document is two guys that i know i've created this one they're amazing they are really really uh, really really good <laughs> and um, so they have created this amazing um, handout with a lot of um, tips and tricks and best practices i'm going to put a link in the description so you can uh, go and uh, grab it and i really urge you to read it multiple times okay remember what they are writing and everything so this is a really good example right here as you can see this uh, bicycle gear and um, so here is the example what i mean by uh, simple uh, simplify the sketches in general or uh, using you know not to use the sketch pattern in this example they have used the sketch pattern and this is really not good this is, this is something that you can really gonna feel the difference 
in performance. So instead, this is how we should do it. You create the first pattern, okay? And then you extrude it and then use the feature pattern to complete the whole gear. And here is another example. This is also very, very, very bad. <laughs> and what you can do is instead something like that. And then you can just do mirrors after that feature mirrors. So this is the right way of doing it. And that's going to save you a lot of performance issues. And let's move on. Uh, use the fillet feature instead of sketch fillet. Uh, again, as you know, there is a fillet right here in the sketch environment. Don't use it. Okay. I'm rarely, rarely using it, if at all. And so try to avoid using this one. It's not going to um, have an impact so much on the performance, but it's a good practice not actually to work with this one. It can cause some issues with modeling in general. Okay, and what else we have here? Uh, yeah, avoid using contact sets. Contact sets, is, you can find it under the joints uh, menu right here. Enable contact set. This is something that takes a lot of resource from the CPU and you're going to feel it immediately. Don't use it, okay? Uh, I'm also rarely using it, but I know what I'm doing when I'm using it. Uh, it's uh, only temporary things that I'm checking, but otherwise don't use it. Moving on, um, create the fillets at the end if possible, and that is in order to avoid errors when the body changes. Uh, this is not something that's really going to affect that much on performance, but let me give you an example. Uh, let's just say we have this body right here that we have created extruded and we created a fillet right here now what happened if i'm going to say ah uh, i don't want to um, use the fillets in this uh, this point um, maybe i'm going to use only this profile as you can see right here and uh, instead so what's going to happen is boom you're going to get a fillet failure okay and there can be also other kind of situation we're going to get feature fa failure so and this is one of the classic ones. I've seen it uh, quite a lot. When we're making changes to the sketch uh, or to the body itself, so the the feature itself cannot comp uh, uh, comply with the changes, then you're going to get an error. So um, so with Fillet, it, it's, uh, it's it's relatively classic. I experience it myself, so that's why I'm keeping the Fillet uh, in the end, unless it's a Fillet that you have to create right now, and uh, then you just create it and it is what it is and that goes uh, the same goes for the joints again create the joints in the end unless you really have to uh, for example if you are inserting a component to your file then it's a good idea to use joint um, because if you are going to use the move command in order to position it it, the, the, the inserted uh, component doesn't have any reference <clears throat> to hold on to which means that if you are going to make changes to uh, to the to the model uh, then the the inserted component gonna stay in place it's not gonna move with the model okay so when we are creating using the joint we are creating kind of uh uh, you know connections or uh, what we yeah so we are putting them together so if we make changes to the model it's gonna move with it i hope it makes sense if not just let me know and i explain it and let's see what else we've got yeah the last one it's um yeah it's it's not gonna really affect that much but again i'm not using it it's called a uh, show default measurement I unchecked it uh, let me show an example what it means it's when we select an edge right here the bottom and the right uh, side bottom you can see one edge length it's give us the calculation of the edge I don't use it um, you can just go to preferences and disable it from here and yeah and that's it so it's not gonna happen every time when you click accidentally 
it's gonna do some calculation so it could you know affect a little bit on performance in some situations so it's better uh, not to have it because anyway if i need to make any kind of calculation i use the measure uh, tool uh, yeah it's much easier much safer so this is it in the list um, it's very very basic but it's also very very important it's the fundamentals and uh, there are many other things uh, you can check of course depends on very various situations but this is a really really good start and it's a really nice list for you to go through and check and see if there is a problem yes no there is a problem yes no it's really going to help you um, if you have any issues right now for example it's a really good guide and in the next video when we're going to talk about the hardware there are more things we can do in order to improve the performance but it also relates kind of to the to the hardware to the graphic cards so that's why i decided to push it to the other video and i also don't want to make this one way too long so yeah i'm going to put the links the list in the description and also all the other resources to the um to the handout guide everything is going to be in the description um, and as usual don't forget to uh, subscribe hit the bell icon to get our notifications and uh, if you like the video thumbs up and i'll see you in the next video bye bye